She has the sudden impulse to reach out and touch the seal. Like the only way to stop the white panic of vertigo is to jump, to finish it, to decide to finish it. Or by reaching out, by touching, she might just connect with him, soothe him, soothe herself, make it mean something. Madness, she knows, but his heavy beauty is suggesting just this. She doesn't do it. She hears her husband, George, calling out for her from the shore, his voice travelling like a lone seagull's cry, searching for her. But she doesn't respond. Transfixed by the seal's gaze upon her, by this odd and uncomfortable gift of him, by the fear of the ever-opening sea, she remains. The seal is the first to move. He shifts his head a little, as though he is beginning to lose interest in her, and he snorts abruptly, spraying her face with seawater, the spiky claws on his foreflipper breaking the surface of the water as he moves. He turns his head, creating thick, dark wrinkles around his neck. But after his black eyes casually scan the horizon, they return to her. His eyes, those eyes, brimming black liquid pools, stare into her. They are asking something of her. They are waiting for her to answer him. The sea blasts an icy wash over her body. She hears George calling her again. This time, the sound of his voice is pitched with relief that he has spotted her in the water. His voice pulls at her. Catherine, Catherine, he calls. Does he see the seal beside her? Does he see him? Catherine, over here. A new spiral of fear kicks in at the sound of her husband's voice. What if George cannot reach her? What if he frightens the seal and provokes it? She feels her stomach lurch as though she might get sick. Reflux burns her throat. Her chest tightens. The eyes of the seal still hold on her. The heft of his body is now remarkably still, his bulk buoyed by the obedient sea. That big grey head. Against her common sense, she turns her body to look for George and sees him wave to her from the rocks, beckoning her to come to him. She opens her mouth, but she cannot find her voice. Instead, her mouth fills with seawater, a thick glide of salt blue into pink. She swallows some, spits out the rest. When she turns back, the seal is gone. She hangs in a quiver of cold sea.